Hello, KM6LYW radio viewers. Uh, we're talking about the DigiPi again today. You can see that on the, the screen on the right. And uh, we're going to talk about some software that can interface with the DigiPi. Uh, we talk a lot about the DigiPi and how to build it, how to configure it, how to set it up, but we didn't really talk too much about how we use it. You know, what are the practical purposes for this thing? A lot of people say, Craig, I built my DigiPi. Great. Now what? Um, so there's a lot we can do. Um, so you're seeing a tactical map on the left side of the screen, and that's called YAC, uh, yet another APRS client. We're going to talk about that. But first, we have to thank the people who make this possible. Um, really, guys, this wouldn't exist if, if it wasn't for your help, you know, not only from a Patreon perspective, but also from, you know, helping out in the community. So Jim, Brad, Doug, Fu, Jeff, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, these are new... Uh, Patreon uh, contributors this month. And of course, uh, you know, I don't want to understate the rest of the gang here who has been helping out uh, with the DigiPry project and this uh, YouTube channel. Really appreciate it, guys. All right. So back to APRS Packet Radio. Um, this is a network that's kind of global. You know, it's on 14539 in uh, the Americas and it's 144.8, I think, in uh, in Europe, and it's a global network of radio stations. You can send messages to each other. Uh, right now, we're looking at some positions uh, that have been coming in over packet radio. Uh, APRS is a whole video all by itself, but we're going to talk about how we can interface Yak. This is a Java client. It uh, runs on Windows, runs on Linux, runs on Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm using it on a Linux desktop right now, and uh, it connects to uh, what we call the terminal node controller, and that is this DigiPi over here. It's running Direwolf under the hood, and Direwolf can do a what we call a, a KISS uh, interface, keep it simple and sweet protocol uh, to interface packet radio software with an actual uh, radio transceiver. So this is a Raspberry Pi um, that we have used in a lot of videos, it can transmit and receive packets. It has AX.25 networking built in. Um, so it's a Raspberry Pi Zero, a audio card stacked on top of that, and then an Adafruit screen uh, displaying you know, traffic that's coming through the, the, the digital transceiver right now. So that's called the DigiPi. So let's use it. Let's not talk about the DigiPi so much. Let's use it a little bit. So Yak is kind of a tactical display. So if I zoom way out... You can see I am in the great state of California, and there are a lot of radio stations that I can hear. Now, I can't hear all of these directly. Uh, this radio, this uh, DigiPi is hooked up uh, through that little cable you can see there to a Yaesu FTM400, which is on the other side of the room. And I'm hearing packets that have been digipeded. Uh, not all of these I've heard directly. In fact, maybe there's a filter that would let, help me show that. It looks a little edgy right now because I got everything zoomed in, you know, like double-sized icons. Uh, they just don't scale very well. But uh, here's me in the center of the map, uh, KM6LYW-2. And uh, I am uh, using uh, KA2 DDO's uh, yet another act client, according to this. And you can put your own message in there. Um, there's a couple of things when you install this. Actually, maybe we can we can talk about how to get this started. So I would to get this going, just type yak download, y a a c download in any browser search engine. Um, you're going to find uh, this uh, welcome to yak page. That's k a two d d o dot org, and then uh, there's a thing called installing yak. I want to click on that, and then if you, it's kind of hidden, but if you look down here, installing Yak itself, it says a zip file. If you click on the zip file, it will download a Yak zip file. I'm going to download it to my home directory in uh, Ham Yak, and uh, it's really easy to run. It runs on any um, system that can run Java, right? So that's pretty cool. So let me just clear this. So basically, you run this command at java-jar yak.jar, and that's after you unzip the file. And then it will pop up and look a lot like this. You get this cool tactical display. You got this cool Kenwood radio looking thing over here. Um, <laughs> that's kind of fun. It, you know, it's, I don't know, I don't use it that much. I just kind of like the orange background, to be honest. Uh, but there's all these stations, and we can do interesting stuff with this. It's like, a cra you know, people, people keep asking me, Craig, what can I do with APRS? What's a practical purpose for this? So, you know, here's this guy, KE6RMN. Um, he's going down Interstate 80 right now because I know that because uh, Highway 50 is closed because of all of the fires. So I can do stuff like I could send him a message. Um, I could say, you know, like, hey, dude, what's up? In fact, I'm going to actually send this and I apologize to KE6RMN right now. <laughs> 
and maybe his radio will acknowledge my message. I really don't know what's going to happen. He might reply. He might not. But anyways, uh, that message was just sent through the DigiPi. Hopefully you can see it um, over here. Uh, <laughs> I hope it turned red and transmitted. Um, so we sent him a message. So cool. I can send another amateur radio object or station a message um, and they can reply. Um, what else can we do? Uh, when, when we're setting it up, why don't we talk about let's set up a little bit. Um, you need to click where it says RF here or when you're adding a port. And there's a couple of things that weren't obvious to me um, on this screen. Uh, you need to check enable port. Uh, that's important because it's not enabled by default and also it's agwpe that's the protocol that we're going to use to talk to the raspberry pi okay um and it needs to be on port 8000 that's what the the digipi is responding on for agwpe you need to put your call sign in here i use like a dash two suffix and then also what's really important is transmit is disabled by default when you when you make a new radio interface i don't know why that is so make sure you click on enable. That was kind of frustrating. So that's a word to the wise right there. And then you you, you save it. Um, I'm just going to hit cancel because I already I already got it going here. And you can set up an APRS IS internet connection and stuff too. And uh, you could be a Digipeter. You could be an iGate using the software. Um, Yak is a good example of scope creep. I mean, it is just epic in its number of features. There's really nothing it can't do, and to its own detriment, because doing something simple is kind of hard, uh, unless you know, unless you figured it out in advance. I mean, I've spent hours messing around with this. This is just the software is epic in scale. Um, so let's get back to some practicality here. Okay, you got Yak installed, and uh, we sent a message to uh, a guy driving down I-80. In fact, it doesn't look like he ever replied. I know his radio lit, lit up. <laughs> you know it did um, with the message. But you can do like message uh, chat with station. I'm going to click on that. And I don't know. Let's do something practical. Uh, let's, let's send an SMS message to a phone how about that um, there is a station out there called sms gte google that one uh, you'll need to set up an account there and it opens this little message window up here and i'm going to say uh, i'm going to set a message to at cl that's a shortcut for my phone number um, so i don't have to disclose my phone number this is a cool message sent via aprs to uh, my cell and cell means mobile device for those of you in Europe. <laughs> Put an exclamation point on there. Um, I'm going to actually get my cell phone here. And I'm going to clear my existing messages. You, this is going to be cool. This is, this is, this, I know it's, it's a big buildup. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to move the DigiPi out of the way and I'm going to put my uh, cell phone right there. We'll see if it, uh, if we get a message, well, it should light up. All right, now I'm going to hit return, and it's going to send a message to SMS GTE, that call sign, and it's going to send it to uh, my cell phone, hopefully. So I don't know why this message thing kicked up here. I'm going to close that. Okay, here it is. I'm sending a message to SMS GTE to the uh, CL alias, which is my cell phone, and we are going to watch my cell phone down in the corner there. All right, just send it. And let's see what we can make it a little bigger here. Ah, I just got a message from a weird cell phone <laughs> number, 201762 something or other. And of course, I can go check that message. And if we look down here, we see this is a cool message sent via APRS to my cell. So it actually got it. How cool is that? So that's something practical we can do with the radio. Um, and I can send a reply, too. So this doesn't have to be, you know, this could be anybody with a cell phone, right? Uh, SMS GTE is the one really handling all the traffic. So let me just type, uh, I don't know, I'll just type reply here. Reply here. And I'll send that. And ideally, we will get it back on our uh, chat with SMS GTE window, which is right here. And it says reply here, and there it is. It already came through. So there it is. We sent an SMS message using Yak and the DigiPi as a, uh, oops, I covered that up, sorry. Let me, let me restate that. We got reply here, this was covered up. We actually got the reply from the cell phone up here uh, in this window. Oh, I'm glad I caught that. So anyways, I sent a message to a cell phone and received a message back from the cell phone using nothing but amateur radio, uh, the DigiPi, 
and uh, Yak software, and that's pretty cool. Um, you can do email as well. So let's again, we're doing something practical here. Um, I'm going to do chat with station again, and the station this time is going to be called email-2. That's the station I'm going to send a message to. And here's my chat with email-2. And I'm going to say, again, I have an alias set up, um, do, you know, Google email-2. It's an email server. You can set up an account there. And I have an alias called CL. That's for my name. This is a test email to uh, myself. And I will send that. I don't think there's a prefix on the CL. I think it should work. Um, and we're gonna, again, we're going to watch the phone to see if we get an email notification. I don't know what's more reliable. My It does say email sent to Craig at Craiger.org. That's me. And it should come to my phone if that phone actually checks that email address. I don't know. Did it light up? <laughs> well, we'll put it over here. Email isn't quite as fast as uh, SMS texting. Uh, but if you do, I did get a message back from the email to service over, over the radio, and it did say email sent. Uh, actually, I sent it twice for, for no reason. Um, I don't know. Let me look real quick to see, see if I got it. And I got a new text message notification. And eh, we'll watch it for a while. Let's see if it comes through. Email is, well, email. It's not as fast as, uh, as SMS texting. So let me see. I'm, those are these are practical uses for amateur packet amateur radio. I mean, you can communicate with non hams using this. Uh, you know, uh, using the SMS GTE gateway, you can use the the, the texting or the email to service. You can you can send email uh, to anyone in the world. So, like if you're in a third world country, like you know, I don't know, Colombia or Venezuela or California, uh, you know, where we have we literally have rolling blackouts. I do use this. This does have very practical usage. Um, you know, we have uh, like you know forest fires, um, brownouts, blackouts. Um, you know, the, I live in the country. The mobile cellular service isn't great. Um, and when it's a problem, I can just plug in a uh, lithium iron phosphate into the Yesu uh, radio behind me and uh, plug it into the Digipi, uh, which is right here. And uh, I can fire up, uh, you know, a PC or something, uh, anything that can run Yak. This could be a laptop. It could be anything. It could be a Raspberry Pi for that matter. Um, so long as you have just enough power to run something like that, you can have email and SMS texting uh, all over amateur radio. And this is all legit in all jurisdictions, as far as I know. I mean, it really lets you communicate with non-hams. I mean, how cool is that? Um, I guess this guy on I-80 never uh, never replied to my message. That would have been cool, just kind of an unsolicited message, you know, and see it see it pop up here. Um, they do pop up when someone sends you a message uh, directly. And uh, I'm checking my phone right now. I just want to see if uh, that mail came through. Yeah, I got a new text message. I already saw that. I want to see if we got a regular message. Yeah, it came through. I just didn't get a notification. So this is what the email to stuff looks like. Eh, it's not going to focus. Uh, but that's the email that just went through to my phone. And uh, you can reply too. I mean, but remember, you only get like 67 characters or so if you're using packet radio. So, you know, be ready for that. It says, yeah, this is a, an email to myself. Yeah, I don't know why my phone didn't notify me of that. Yeah. It did now. <laughs> oh, well, this is live. This is how it goes. Let's get it back on the Digipi. All right, so this is, just to, just to recap here, this is a yet another APRS client that's Yak. It runs on virtually any operating system because it's Java. Um, it has a ton of features. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just barely scratching the surface. What I wanted to demonstrate is how I could communicate with other stations and other cell phones or other email accounts. All right, so let me know what your experience is with Yak, you know, how you use it. Uh, I don't know, maybe send me a screenshot or something. And uh, or, or we might have a short series of videos here on, you know, practical ways to use the DigiPi. I know we talk about building it all the time, and the nuts and bolts are really cool. But uh, let's step back a little bit and see how we can use the DigiPi in, in, in a more practical uh, uh, manner. All right, guys, this is KM6LYW Radio, and uh, I'm clear. <laughs>